a Smellicopter, Digital Twin Cities, and top podcasts for engineers. All this and more in this episode of Exploration into Technology. Welcome to Exploration into Technology. This week in engineering, moths are some of the most sensitive chemical sensors of the insects. Inspired by moths, a group of researchers at the University of Washington have created a fly scent tractor which they call the Smellicopter. The hawk moths used by the University of Washington researchers are palm sized with antennas that are roughly toothpick in diameter. The Smellicopter uses just one connected to a lightweight circuit board. When the antenna picks up a scent, it sends an electrical signal to the circuit board which directs the drone according to a simple algorithm. When the strength of the scent detection reaches a certain threshold, the drone knows to follow it. Moths are hyper attuned to pheromones and floral scents, so researchers are using the latter to lure the smellicopter. With a little more research, the smellicopter might be able to locate disaster survivors, pinpoint chemical leaks, and find the source of greenhouse gases, all on the dirt cheap. Smart connected devices and the internet of things create opportunities for humans to engage with their environment previously thought to be impossible. For people with disabilities, it provides them the ability to hook them into their surroundings and develop new ways to interact with the world. A CES Innovation 2021 award winner, the Oticon, for example, is the world's first hearing aid with a deep neural network embedded on the chip. It aims to use AI to deliver up to 30% more surrounding sound and increase speech understanding by 15%. The Tact Plus printer is a graphic tactile printer to help the visually impaired learn and print braille at any time. It differs from other printers because it is also a 3D imaging printer. Educators can print pages for teaching visually impaired children. For people who suffer from mild low vision or reading difficulties, the OrCam Read offers an AI-assisted visual reader. Winner of CES 2021 Best of Innovation Award, OrCam Read is a handheld device with a smart camera that can read text from any printed surface or digital screen. More people are moving to urban areas worldwide. The United Nations projects that large global cities will account for 68% of the world's population by 2050, creating a strain on infrastructure and services. To keep these areas operating smoothly, city governments need to leverage new technology based on intelligent IoT solutions that will power automated services, improve waste management, deploy self-driving car fleets, regulate energy usage and digitally connected citizens. And to successfully deploy a smart city like this, engineers will need to utilize the power of the digital twin. But what are digital twins and how do you create the smart cities of tomorrow? That is what's being explored in the latest episode of Mechanical Engineering Magazine's special report. Let's take a look. Digitalization is penetrating engineering practices, and digital twins are being developed to aid manufacturers in the development of products, machines, and even single examples of infrastructure. Now they are poised to take a bigger step on the development of smart cities, gathering design and digital information of individual pieces and spinning them into a whole. New tools and platforms allow designers to place their projects into a virtual neighborhood or city and test how they will impact nearby buildings or areas. At the same time, structural, mechanical, and electrical details of single buildings or infrastructure can be isolated or analyzed for performance and placement. It is happening now. ABI Research reported that by 2025, some 500 cities around the world will be using some sort of urban twin, up from just a handful now. They are being used to replicate buildings and their systems and operations, infrastructures such as highways, surface transportation patterns, and pretty much everything that comprises an urban neighborhood, town, or city. Digital Twin is a virtual replica of physical buildings and infrastructure assets connected to the data in and around them. And they are used for, and specifically in the built environment, for the purposes of, of optimizing design and planning, 
construction and an ongoing operation of assets over, over their life cycle. Uh, what they do that's unique and different is that true digital twins aggregate massive amounts of information. So everything within the project lifecycle ecosystem. By becoming like a massive master data library, if you will, for a project, uh, it enables users to run analysis in a way that they never have before. Data is the fuel that drives their development. The more there is, the better the model. Digital twins have developed faster in the manufacturing and aerospace industries, but creating them for urban use takes this to the next step. The mechanical space, really, I would say, pioneered the concept of a digital twin. I would say the AEC industry is, is in a very different space, uh, a little bit behind. You know, if you ask 10 people in the AEC space what a digital twin is, you're going to get 10 different answers. That is crystallizing now as owners and government officials build on digital advances. The smart city is on the horizon, and the digital twin is the tool that will bring smart cities from the drawing board to life. Engineers have only started to scratch the surface of what is possible, but with the power of simulation, there is no predicting how far the city limits will reach. You can watch full episodes of Mechanical Engineering Magazine's special reports on their YouTube channel. Just head over to youtube.com slash mechanicalengineeringmagazine. Listening to podcasts is a great way to brush up on your technical knowledge, learn new skills, and stay informed on what matters most to your engineering field. Accessible through popular platforms like Spotify and iTunes, there are literally hundreds of podcasts covering every conceivable topic, which can be overwhelming to navigate depending on your mood. While you can search your preferred podcast apps for the latest and greatest, here's our picks for what's most relevant to engineers. For engineers interested or working in aerospace, NASA in Silicon Valley includes interviews with scientists and engineers from NASA AMS Research Center facility. Similarly, Houston We Have a Podcast is produced out of NASA Johnson. The Engineering Commons podcast is hosted by mechanical, electrical, and civil engineers. There are 100 episodes to choose from, discussing issues of importance to today's engineering professionals. Guest engineers frequently provide insights into their real-life experiences, too. If big data is more up your alley, Data Skeptics is the way to go. It features a mix of interviews with leading data scientists, machine learning and artificial intelligence experts, as well as a well-informed host who helps you understand the concepts being talked about. Engineering Matters is another technical podcast worth a listen. A solid episode to start on, The Rise of Digital Twin, where hosts join Northumbrian Water as it explores the potential use of digital twins to transform its business. Last, but certainly not least, each episode of AS Meet TechCast brings you the innovators, the innovations, and the issues that are advancing engineering. Currently available on Spotify and iTunes, check out the March 3rd episode featuring Vice President of Hearst Lab, Lisa Burton O'Toole, as she discusses women-led startups and the need for diverse teams working on technical problems together. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Now please remember to click that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.